this is an addendum to what we've already talked about before. Uh, there was one thing that you said about peace, that if enough people want it, that it might happen, and you give the example of uh, cigarettes being banned in drinking places, but individually, there are some people who are hostile. Maybe they were beaten by abusive fathers, uh, something happened, they're not very smart, uh, they go for violence first. Yeah. Could there be peace while there are many people who are like this? I think the whole uh, way towards peace, even if we are, even if we'll get right now on the right track, it might take a generation or two to accomplish the mission. Because, uh, like I previously said, it's a matter of education and some of the people are already lacking the right education or being into the course of violence and, and that's something you will not be able to completely stop. But you'll be able to try and start of getting humanity into the right track and then maybe a generation or two after that we might be on a, on a, on a peaceful uh, scale. But that's utopia for the moment. Have you ever heard the band Immolation? The death metal band? Yes. Yeah. On their first album, there's a song for those left behind. And what I really enjoyed about that was the lyrics. Uh, they were, at the time, they were anti-Christian, but they were anti-Christian using actual Christian teachings and Christian ideas uh, rather than just saying, fuck you, Christianity. And for those left behind was a song about, you know, Jesus, maybe he had suffered, but he left and we're still here. And then the album prior to your new one, the last song, uh, second to the last song, you have these lyrics about leaving us behind, maybe teaching us to fly. Is it sort of a deity leaving mankind to fend for itself? and then becoming strong. Could you explain a little bit more about that? Uh, what song of ours were you referring to? Ah, it was, what album? It was the second, uh, it was the previous one to this new one. Uh, all is one? All, yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, you're referring to the deity who left maybe to teach us how to fly? Do you remember those oh, lyrics? Oh yeah, yeah, our own messiah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So yeah, could you yeah. talk about that? Yeah, that song, uh, was just uh, a wonder that, that we, we were wondering why do people pray all the time and what, what do they really expect to get while we don't really believe that there is any divine intervention. Uh, I think that if there is a divine intervention and the world looks the way it looks, so if there is a God, it must really suck. So. It explains to me a lot of things, knowing that there is not any divine intervention. Not in the Holocaust, not when a kid is being kidnapped in India, not when a girl is molested in Africa, or, or when any other bad thing is happening. God is not interfering, if, if he exists at all, at all. So that song is wondering about that, and why do we pray, why, what do we expect while we pray? Uh, what do we what do we expect to be and when we will, will we learn to fly on our own and to realize that all our deeds are the making of our hands and that we are the Messiah that we need we are the, the, the salvation or, or the, that happiness or the way to, to a better world is only in our hands it's not in the hands of the Prime Minister or the preacher or the priest or God it's in our hands we are the Messiah we need, and, and that song is, is dealing about it. Hitler is known for, or uh, he, the Holocaust is attributed to him, but he also had people like Himmler with him. And, and many I, others. And I wonder why Germans get all of the bad attention for anti-Semitism and genocide when Stalin was anti-Semitic himself. He allowed what were called the black gangs to do to Jews whatever they wanted. Uh, could you talk about 
the Russian aspect of anti-Semitism? Anti-Semitism is uh, a plague that uh, was everywhere, not only in Germany, not only in Russia. Uh, it was in Italy, it was in uh, most of the countries where you had Jews. I think that the source of anti-Semitism uh, uh, lies with a few very subconscious uh, things that were planted in, in, in our mind. First one is that Jews were considered to be chosen ones. And when, when a parent prefers one son upon the other, it's not a good thing, it's not a good sign, and, and bad things will happen. We, we can see that with biblical histories, we can see that uh, with the history of Judaism, because if, if God chose the Jews, then the unchosen one will always try to show that the chosen one is as fucked up as he is. And, and I believe that this is one of the sources of anti-Semitism. And just for the record, I don't think the Jews are being chosen by any means. I don't see any difference between any creature on earth. We are all bo uh, born the same, all bleeding red, and uh, it's, it's only our education that, that makes us different. I think that uh, sometimes people say that uh, without religions, the world will be better. I'm not a supporter or pro-religious guy, but, but you mentioned Stalin, which was a complete atheist, and he's one of the biggest killers in the history of humanity. Uh, if you take Mao, the Chinese, or Hitler, they were all, I don't know, maybe Hitler followed some religious aspects, but I wouldn't consider him to be really religious. Maybe Nazism was some kind of a movement. But uh, anti-Semitism were everywhere towards history uh, because of two reasons. People believe that God chose the Jews and they didn't like it. And because of the crucifixion, so-called, of Jesus, because of the Jews and blaming Judas. And Judas sounds very much like Jewish or Jew, Jude. And uh, the propaganda of those days were very, very straightforward to, to blame the Jews for everything. And ever since then, the Jews who are being like less of 1% of the worldwide population are being accused with so many things. It's like people say we control the media, we control the governments, we control everything which is a complete bullshit. But the interesting thing about Judas and the Sanhedrin is whoever wrote that myth or whoever was responsible for promoting that story did not understand Jews because the Sanhedrin could not have met at night during that time. And yeah. they had the authority to condemn them on their own. They didn't need Rome to intervene. That's right, but... but let, let, I'll be honest with you, who, who cares? I mean, I mean, why should I be responsible for something that a guy named Judas did 2,000 years ago? How do you relate that to me? I mean, let's say if your grand-grand-grandparent, his uncle was a child rapist, what does it say about you? Nothing. It just happened to be that this guy from your family was a scum. Or, or whatever, I'm not saying Judas was a scum, but how does that have anything to do with me? This is a complete propaganda to throw something that happened 2,000 years ago upon a Jewish that, that's living on today. I mean, I honestly cannot find anything more ridiculous than that when I'm thinking about it now. It's just so stupid. Do you really blame me, Kobe, for the crucifixion? of a guy whom we cannot even prove that he existed 2,000 years ago? The thing that I learned in my mythology class that I had to take as a general education requirement for my degree was that uh, in the old days there was no such thing as plagiarism and so Gilgamesh and the story of Noah are similar. There are many other similarities too from the ancient world. Yeah. I like the uh, story of Homer. Um, he was supposedly blind and illiterate, yet he wrote the Odyssey. And most Americans don't know that the Odyssey in Greek rhymes, but for some reason translation is not rhyming. Yeah. But uh, when I read a little bit about Muhammad, he supposedly could not read and oh, went into a cave and dictated a perfect text. But if, if you read it, it's not really so perfect. But 
the Quran is it a hateful book and is it itself anti-semitic I was wondering what the basis is between Arab and Jew hostility first of all Muslims as Christians do believe that all the prophets of Israel they were true prophets they even do admit that God have chosen the Jews to be chosen ones but both of them claim that the Jews failed to apply their mission that's the core of the existence of Christianity and Islam as an alternative to Judaism I always have this uh, allegory of, of from the gremlins Do you know Gizmo and the gremlins so the Jews were like gremlin, uh, Gizmo like a very small thing that two very big religions came out of it if you look at Christianity thousands of years ago you can find similarities of their way to, to some of the Muslims way of, of jihad you know and war and stuff like that Christians decapitated heads right way thousands of years before the word Isis were, were ever invented um, as for the Quran the Quran has two parts who are a little bit contradicted uh, at first Muhammad is flattering the Jews, calling them all the chosen ones, uh, and, and, and admitting that God has chosen them and gave them the promised land and so on and so on. And uh, you know, Moses or Abraham, they're, they're holy people in, in, in Islam, even though that they were from the sons of Israel, and there's a whole surah in the Quran about calling sons of Israel. But you see, in the first half of the Quran, Muhammad is flattering the Jews. Then on the second half, He's really bashing them uh, and, and even calling to, to, you know, for violence or to kill them and stuff like that. And, and there's a question, how, how can it be this contradiction? Because on one hand he's flattering them, on the other hand he's calling to kill them. Um, specialists have said that at first he tried to offer himself as, as, as a last prophet and he wanted the Jews to accept him as a prophet and uh, so he flattered the Jews and, and he wanted to be friends with the Jews but, but then the Jews rejected uh, him being a prophet didn't accept it didn't thought that it's appropriate or, or fitting and I think that his insult were that he started to bash the Jews right after and saw them as infidels and stuff like that so that's one of the explanations that I tend to accept maybe uh, and uh, about the Quran I, I didn't read all of it I mean I do know some stuff about the Quran I wouldn't call myself a Quran expert to say if it's an anti-semitic uh, book or something but like I said at one point it's flattering the Jews at the other point it, it's really sounds like anti-semitic so maybe it's an, at, the be at the eye of the beholder I don't know I often wanted to ask someone if there were no Jews in Israel, would Muslims still be anti-Semitic? And I think your question, uh, I'm sorry, your answer uh, explains a lot that I needed to know. Yeah, I think, I think that it doesn't have anything to do with the Jews being in Israel. I mean, you've got to give credit to the Muslims that on the times of World War II, the Jews who were living in the Arab countries they were not hurt so Europeans were much more cruel to Jews than the Arabs back in the days uh, I wouldn't say that the Jews were equal to Muslims in those countries they weren't but they had this kind of peace and silence and and uh, there were synagogues in the Arab countries so you got to give him that credit uh, but I would still think that Muslims would believe that you should imply Islam all over the world and it's Islam is the final superior religion and that means that it more, it's more than Judaism uh, and they're the one who carry the flag and they're the alternative and they're the right path and way to go to God so even just by that belief they will feel that they are the right one and those are the wrong ones and, and it will never be equal in any circumstances it doesn't matter if we are in Israel or not
ever write songs that maybe have a I wouldn't say preaching but a message or are you just depicting the sorrow of what is happening oh our, our band is is a one big message um, I think that that one of the biggest comments that I'm getting from fans who get to meet me and, and, and speak to me it's always a constant thank you for your message um, the message is not directly through the lyrics we're not writing lyrics of let's hug each other we are all the same those kind of things but we're playing with those subjects and the outcome is that people are getting themselves together from that song um, so it's a very interesting thing because people sometimes might one of the biggest misconceptions about Orphan Land is that people think that we are about these kumbaya songs let's hug all is one we're all the same yeah we're all the same but we sing about the fact that we fail to see that we are all the same and people get by that the, the, the message that we're all the same so I think that the fans are the one that make the whole picture completed by getting what we're doing here and, uh, but we are definitely a band of message uh, our themes our front covers the pictures of the band uh, and and of course the lyrics and and the music it's always a message behind them and it's always a message that we fail to see that we fail to understand that the media and politicians they brainwash us and we fail to see that if you go to the common people they just want to live their lives they want to have a good life uh, I, I believe that when you go to the common people of Arabs Israelis whatever they just want to have normal life no one really wants to go to war unless they had a very fucked up childhood and very hateful parents I think that if all the parents would have loved their children and give them endless love no one will think about war sounds hippie maybe but uh, it's one of the problems of the world the lack of love and, and, and fucked up parents and it's like a chain inherited from a generation to generation we're trapped it's a disease and you don't even describe it as a disease it's 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 a scam it's it's a trap we are trapped look at how how advanced we are in technology or science we are doing huge steps in technology all the time while humanity is still trapped on this flying Dutchman that just doesn't find the land. In Judaism, is there a belief in the afterlife or is that a source of debate? Yeah, there's a belief about afterlife. There's a belief about the next world. Uh, and uh, there's also a Reincarnation is also something the Jews uh, believe in. They believe that this world is just a small passage on, on, on your soul's journey. And uh, by your deeds you will decide if you will go on the right, or on the right world or, or on a worst world. It's like heaven and hell started from Judaism, I think. I mean, that's, that's what I know. So there is a place of unpleasant uh, maybe punishment for bad people would you say or is that you're asking for my personal opinion well uh, from from the teaching because uh, or from not, people know about the Christian view of these things but they don't know it's very similar uh, to Judaism the only thing with Christianity is they made that fallen angel thing and they really made Satan and God to be very equal in a way their struggle is very equal uh, I think that in Judaism, Satan is much smaller. Satan, that world, is, is, is coming from Hebrew, Satan. And uh, I personally don't think that there is a world where you go and fire is burning you and stuff like that. I think that heaven and hell exist right here, right now, in this world. People are, are going through hell in their lives here some people maybe live in paradise luckily it's all temporary for everyone and I guess this is a final question because this is just an addendum to get a little deeper into yeah. to you um, as far as world peace we talked about 
the ideal, and we talked about the knuckleheads, the people who are violent, the individuals who are violent. But uh, there's also an aspect of mankind that seeks to cluster in groups. Do you think that as long as there are groups, there will be hostility? And is it impossible to get rid of cliques and groups? Well, I think that individuality is uh, something important in our lives. I think there will always be groups. I don't think that the core of the problem is with groups. Um, Tibetan people, they are a group of people coming from Tibet. They're all about compassion, understanding, tolerance, love, meditation. I don't see a problem with that group, for example. So I wouldn't say that group is the problem. I think that people in our education is the problem. Too much violence in the media, in our toys, in, in, in our reality, in our newspapers, in our history. It's everywhere. And I think that's, that's the main problem. Because if you, if you would have taken a Tibetan boy and, and put it in Afghanistan, in the Taliban, he might grow up to be a, a Taliban warrior. It doesn't matter that he was born in Tibet. He's a white canvas. So the education is the way to shape the form of his personality. If you look at Tibetan peoples, there's no problem with the group of Tibetans. There's the only problem of our wrong education system, that we are not being taught about human behavior, about a dialogue, about listening to each other, all these kind of things. We are in this very big noise, unable to listen to the other side, self-victimized, dealing with the wrong things. Everyone is watching reality TV. Everybody is dealing with the ass of Kim Kardashian. Everybody is reading about Justin Bieber's red jacket. No one is dealing with dying children in Africa or in kidnapped children in India or in all those problems of humanity. No one sits down to, to, to really figure out and understand where did we take the wrong turn. And that's the problem. I think that if we will be educated properly, groups will not be the problem because we will all work to do good. And, and that'll be the truth about it. That's it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.